So Josh, thanks so much for jumping on the Zoom call. Um, this is the first time, just so everybody knows, and this is full disclosure, first time we've ever spoken. Um, so no prior engagements, but Josh, will you tell me and everybody else, what is the name of your detailing business and where are you from? Where are you located? So we're based out of San Diego, California, and my business name is Detail Green USA. Uh, and then I have some smaller like kind of websites just specifically for marketing uh, within that. But yeah, the, the company is Detail Green USA. Okay. I'm pinning that because I have questions about that. Um, sure. Okay. So you live in San Diego and it's Detail Green USA. Why the name Detail Green? Is it like you only use particular products? Yeah, so we try and just be as eco-friendly as possible. Uh, I, okay. I grew up surfing my whole life. And one of the things like, you know, it doesn't rain that much here in San Diego, but when it would rain, I mean, I would surf regardless, but it would rain and then the water would get polluted and then I'd get like crazy sinus infections and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to be, to just do something that wasn't contributing to that problem. Got it. Okay. So you would hate us folks in Tennessee, man, washing yeah. cars <laughs> and just letting all of it go down the drain, man. You're just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, very cool. So Detail Green USA. And how long have you been in the detailing business thus far? So, uh, since 2005. Okay, so a very long time. Yep. Um, are you mobile? Are you stationary? Are you both? Yeah, uh, both, but I would still, uh, honestly, 90, 95% of my business is still mobile, really. It's just, okay. I built the customer base that's used to that. So it's hard to, you know, right. break away from that really when they're, they enjoy me coming to them, which totally fine with me. Totally. Um, okay. So uh, tell me like the, give me the context of your detailing business. Do you do mostly traditional detailing coatings? Like, do you do window tinning? Like what is, what is your business? Yeah, so it's mostly just traditional detailing and then ceramic coating. So we do we have okay. a shop location where we do the ceramic coatings at the shop. Um, outside of that, yeah, like our average detail is usually about three hundred bucks in, in that Got range. Um, most, like, I mean, honestly, ninety nine percent of my customers are like all their cars are pretty clean anyway. I'm not dealing like, right. I'd like to film some disaster detail videos. It's just really hard <laughs> to find disaster details, right? It's like, Dude, I, you know, got to get those views, man. That's I'll tell right. you what. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Usually totally. the worst I come by, you know, is sand in the carpets and, and dog hair. So, yeah, yeah. That's how I, that's how I feel on YouTube. I'm like, okay, everybody, full disclosure. This video is not going to get a lot of views. Okay. Cause all I can speak to are the people who want to watch a clean car get detailed. Right. Um, Cause that's how real life detailing businesses work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so anyway, so that's really good. Okay. So you said that you had, you were saying before we got on that you just had an employee come back. Do you have employees? How many employees do you have? What does that look like? Yeah. So currently just one. I've in the past, I've always done uh, independent contractors. Um, then there was that AB, I think it was AB 11 law that, or they were trying to ban like Uber and all that kind of stuff here in California. So I got really nervous about that. I didn't want to do any independent contractors anymore. So I finally just hired someone on as a full-blown employee and Got it. Um, yeah, I just have the one guy now. Um, I have a dealership account that we still do some dealership work. It was good, especially with him. He was new, um, no detailing experience in the past. So it was great. I trained him up and then I sent him over there just to, you know, repetition, repetition, repetition. Sure. So it's been great for that. Um, I think moving forward, that'll kind of be my training ground for a lot of guys. Okay. Killer. More more. I'm going to. I have this fancy glass desk that I can use an expo marker on. So <laughs> nice. now I don't have to carry around my notepad so I can make notes of what I want to ask you about. Amazing. Cool. You guys, this is the full behind the scenes view here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So will you give like the history of how you started detailing back in 2005, sure, yeah. back in, it's, in the prehistoric era? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> uh, I grew up, like I said, I grew up surfing. I had sponsors. I was actually getting paid a little bit from my sponsors that was what I wanted to do. I, you know, I wasn't making a ton of money, but it was really enjoyable. Uh, I was on a trip down in Mexico. I was in a place called Puerto Escondido for, uh, I was down there for a month. I came back and my main sponsor dropped their whole men's program. So they were paying me 2000 bucks a month and I would get like photo incentives every time I got a, a picture published in a magazine or whatever. So uh, all that was gone. So I was like, crap, man, what, what am I going to do? You know? So I uh, was looking online and didn't find anything I was just kind of discouraged and said, I'm, I'm just going to go surfing to, you know, just clear my mind a little bit. So driving down, I saw a mobile detailer go by me. And then like a week later, uh, enrolled in a school here that's in San Diego. Um, it's a, a week long course. And then uh, started immediately after that. 
Okay, you got to tell me about the detailing school. So, yeah, so, okay, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so it's a company called rightlook.com. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I um, have, yep. Yeah, so they do detail. I mean, they do uh, everything, tint, wraps. They used to do interior repair stuff. They don't do that anymore. Um, but so I went through that way back then. Their business has changed a little bit. I actually know the trainer over there now. Um, but back then, it was... Good and bad. They, I start off with the trailer. I bought the whole trailer set up through them. Um, they sell you on every, it was their own brand of chemicals, but they would give me like five different types of waxes. Five, you know, just, I was, it was overkill. Um, now was I run this, really lean. Sorry, I'm interrupting you in between it. So I, I'm no, going to interrupt you as you say things so that I can say, wait, yeah. about that. Um, so did they tell you that that was how the school would work at the beginning or did you kind of go through the whole school and at the end it was like hey if you want to get started really easily here's the whole thing for you a little bit of both actually you could potentially just go through the schooling and not buy the trailer not buy any supplies or anything else i just wanted to get started so i just went all in kind of I, I jumped in a little i probably should know a little more research but i just jumped yeah. in and, yeah, i mean it's worked right. out you know but um, I think I could have started off a lot cheaper than I did. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Did you like their products? Were they good? Yeah, no, they actually worked. They, yeah, they worked great. So I don't know who was blending them, you know, but but uh, yeah, they worked great. So okay, that yeah, was nice. And so, what was the beginning like? Like, how'd you get customers? Rough. Yeah, rough. So uh, <laughs> I love that. How yeah. Was the beginning? <laughs> yeah, it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> yeah, I started off, man. Like, you, you, I would set my pricing, and then. Uh, to get customers, I was using, there's a little local, ma oh, I don't know if it's local actually, but it was a magazine called Get One Free. Have you ever heard of that? It's like a little mailer deal. It's just full. And basically they would sell you on like, Hey, you know, like buy a detail, get a Teflon coating back then. Right. Uh, for free. Right. And I first got into it and they were like, Hey, you know, really get the most kind of like, um, group on, they were like, Hey, you know, the bigger the discount, the more customers, you know, the more stuff you're going to get calls on. So at the end of the day, I would, I would get customers. I was building, I was, I was working, but not actually making any, any money because I was discounting everything and, you know, paying for the ads and everything else. It was really a, a bit of a waste. So that was, you know, discouraging. Um, and then from there, I got away from that just because I learned my lesson. You know, I was like, yeah, this, this isn't working. Um, and I think back then it, it was all advertising on Craigslist and that was actually producing back then. So uh, just like yeah. free listings, like yeah. detailer San Diego area. Yeah. You just do it like every morning post an ad. And I mean, I, I, that's how I used to do uh, Sean White's cars. I mean, you know, the Olympic snowboarder uh -huh. um, and his, he had just bought a new car and the delivery company reached out to me through my Craigslist ad. So, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's funny how that all that worked. Craigslist is like the only website that can be what it is and be so low resolution i mean it's like yeah. blows my mind it's like you log on it's just like hyperlinks just listed you're like how is this a thing yeah but i know it's amazing i know it's amazing still going <laughs> yeah i know, I know. back then still. i get it kind of but now it's like yeah how's that still around dude it, it is the myspace of website <laughs> listing service <laughs> listing websites it's crazy yeah. um okay so you were doing that kind of thing. And then you, so you obviously got some momentum doing yep. more of the free listing stuff. Um, were there any, was there anything in the beginning where it was like, okay, this is kind of what caught on or like this strategy or this type of person, this type of customer. And you were like, okay, I'm kind of like going down this vein. Was there something like that? Yeah. So actually in the, in the beginning, I was getting some traction, but it was still, you know, it was still hit or miss for me really. Uh, I was working within the surf industry after that. I actually got a job with a buddy of mine. We were, uh, there's a company called Reef Sandals and we were doing oh, yeah. sales. For, yeah. So we were doing the sales for them in the Caribbean territory. So I'd be in San Diego for three months, go to the Caribbean for a month, do like 12 or 15 islands, come back. And while I was back, I'd be running my detail business. And then I got one of the wealthier San Diego people, like, like, I mean, tons and tons of money. They're listed in Forbes at two. Uh, 1.2 billion, like just tons Pretty of good. money. Yeah. So I had, he had 15 cars that he wanted me to start managing and just keeping clean. And um, at that point, I couldn't leave for a month at a time. So uh, that's when I decided to really go back in full 100%. And that was, man, what year was that? To the, maybe 2008 or something like that, three, three years okay. into the detailing business. Um, so then from there, it stuck on. And then I was able to build 
from there because you know word of mouth and, and his reputation and all that kind of stuff right. really helped grow right substantially okay totally by the way i didn't say this in the beginning you have a youtube channel and it I is do. called i'm josh v i'm josh v and <laughs> yeah, you know nice what? and simple the depth of creativity in that name let me tell you <laughs> yeah. i love it uh, yeah. i'm josh v okay wait how do you pronounce your last name vanderwall Okay, so it's just Vanderwall. Yeah, yeah um, I, I, technically it's Dutch, so it's like Vanderwall or, or something like that. Okay. So I didn't want to say it, but before yeah. I got on here, I actually said it out loud to myself in a German accent. So <laughs> I don't know that's, what that that's means, very close. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, cool. Um, so you started managing, so you got kind of in with, um, it's kind of funny. I actually talk about this a lot. Uh, many in many ways there is the one customer that kind of tips the scale for a lot of yes. people because i have a very similar experience um so when you were managing those 15 cars you said that you couldn't go oh i gotta ask you this so you were using you were selling reef sandals do yep. you have a, a pair of reef sandals that have the bottle opener on the bottom that's the number one s selling sandal I mean, other things. i'm like these guys are geniuses. This is like yeah. uh, this is like a post-it note invention. People love yeah. this thing. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. My brother had them and he used it. You've got them like high school. I mean, this is like 10 years ago. Anyway. Yeah. Um, sure. So yeah. So anyway. Uh, okay. So you said you couldn't continue doing what you were doing. When you started managing these 15 cars, was that the downhill slope that was like just more came in and more came in and that was the full-time gig now? Yeah, absolutely. It gave me the confidence because okay. now I had a monthly base. Right. right from that and then i was able to grow up from there and and right not be so urgent to make the same mistakes of the the advertising mistakes that i made and right. spending too much money on it for not the return um right. i didn't have to worry about that as much and just kind of started growing slowly from there okay so today mm -hmm. do you have a website you obviously have social media through things like youtube what is your like advertise i mean obviously have a very strong word of mouth base but do you have an yeah. internet presence that's stronger now yeah so i have my basic websites detailgreenusa.com um not set up well so i didn't have a location originally uh for that so for my google listing my google uh business listing i did a ups box a us no wait, ups store box because mm -hmm. uh, they give you at least give you an actual physical physical location it doesn't say PO right. box um so my ranking was never that great on that. And then, so I went out to build another website. I mean, it's a, a exact mirror. It's the same exact site. It's just mm -hmm. Carlsbad car detailing. You're probably familiar with Carlsbad. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, now with that one, if you search, if you're in Carlsbad and you search for car detailing, we're number one, number one on the map, you know, so just really okay. focusing on that and that really, really helps. Right. So you're located in San Diego. So this is interesting because this is the way SEO ends up always working for any local, particularly detailers, but local service-based business. So you're in San Diego. Is there a particular suburb of San Diego like Carlsbad that you just dominate? And that's where like 90% of your business comes. Is that Carlsbad? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Totally. Yep. That's actually a good bookmark for people watching. What generally happens is you're in a large city and there are surrounding cities where there is a lot of opportunity and sort of underserved online presence of other detailers and you end up kind of ranking sometimes out of just like default not even because it's like a super strong listing it's just like right there's not a lot of other things there absolutely um, not a lot of competition you can really yeah, yeah get in there exactly okay so i gotta circle back around on this um okay so the dealership work talk to me about that you said that you have your employee um that's what he does mostly or she i don't know who it is it's, it's a he yeah and okay. uh, not mostly i mean it's a small it's just one small independent dealership that i've worked with for a long time i, I know them so um it's yeah essentially i mean obviously dealer, dealerships don't pay very much uh sure. they cover his hourly i basically don't make any money on it but well, i do not not a ton but um sure it's able to uh, again he so he's been with me for three months now Okay. So whenever they call, uh, especially with the used car market right now, it's so crazy. So they're having issues right. even getting cars sometimes. Um, so when they get cars in, like today, they just got seven cars in. So he's over there hammering that stuff out. Got but it. then next week, they'll probably have nothing. So it'll work. Okay. With me. I'll send them out on solo jobs. Has that been like a training ground for him? Is that kind of the point? Yep, absolutely. Just um, he, he worked with me, just side by side with me. And then to get him... Because uh, th at that point, I knew, hey, he knows how to do everything. 
at the same time, he would still be like, Hey, do you want me to do this next? Do you want me to do this next? So I just wanted to get him in a place where it's constant repetition so that he can start thinking on his own, on his feet and just going through the process. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Let me ask you this. Maybe you don't want to answer this actually. I don't know. You tell me when I ask, uh, cause like, here's something interesting that I always, I've experienced in a lot of ways, but, uh, in the detailing or when you're running a detailing business and you're hiring people on, it is sometimes difficult to find the overlap between a person who can become a skilled detailer as well as somebody who is skilled with people. And yeah. sometimes like that Venn diagram just exists like this. They don't overlap. Yeah. Um, has that been something that you've thought about or experienced a cha any challenges in? Uh, just huh? curious. Okay. <laughs> yeah, extremely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cool. It's very difficult. So yeah. I, I do look at it now. So in the past I've had that and I'm like, man, I don't even want to have employees anymore. I, I, I don't have, it's too much of a headache. Um, sure. But then I started looking at it as in looking more at myself on it and be like, Hey, it's, it's my fault. I'm not training them well enough. Right. So right. whether it be on the actual technical side of actually doing the detail jobs or just being friendly and like, Hey, how's it going? Nice to meet you. you know, yeah. Walk the car with right. you and just be friendly with them. Cause I mean, that really as good of a job as you can do, if the person doesn't like kind of connect with you, that's where I found is like, I get the most of my reviews because Hey, like we're friends now, you know? So right. exactly. And that, that really kind of, yeah. Sparks things a lot more than, than anything else. Right. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Very difficult though, to find people that are, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, it's there's crazy. two things exist like independently in the world. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, shockingly, um, yeah. I know. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Um, okay, so your day to day now, does it look like a lot of in terms of your business, do you would you say like if you had to separate it like into percentages, is it like I basically see a hundred percent new cars all the time? Is it like fifty percent returning customers, fifty percent new customers? What does that look like? I would say probably 50, 50, but on a revenue scale, 75, 25 new customers, just because yeah. they're getting the full, you know, so um, the full thing. But, yeah, exactly. But again, having that stable base is right. what gives you the confidence to grow, right? Cause you're not having to yeah. search and be scared every month. Exactly. I wish more detailers understood that it's like, yeah, until you, until you can build some stability, you just can't breathe. So yeah, there's, there's no room to think about doing anything else. Correct. Um, Okay, cool. So do you like doing ceramic coatings? Is this something, is this something that's kind of like just in addition to what you're doing right now? And it's not something you focus on a lot. Is it something you really want to focus on more? What does that look like? Yeah, I really don't focus, focus on it too much. Really uh, what it is, is growing up surfing. So I have a sprinter van that I, I built out into like a little camper deal. And I have a good friend who builds them out all the time. That's his business. He's, he's just running that. And the roofs of those things get so hammered because people don't want to clean them, right? They're, they're a pain in the butt to clean. They're big. Um, so we do a lot of ceramic coatings on those. They'll come in, they'll buy a brand new van, bring it to him to build it out. As soon as he finishes it, comes over to me with ceramic coating, get it all, all dialed in. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The sprinter vans are popular in SoCal. It's funny. Like, I guess it makes sense. Cause I mean, it's like, I go to Southern California pretty often. I mean, we were there, my wife and I were there literally all of December. We flew mm -hmm. into LA, then went down to St. Clemente, then to Encinitas, then it went down to Mexico, then back up to Encinitas, nice. San Clemente. Anyway, um, it stayed <laughs> most of the time in LA because we have, we have friends that we go see, but uh, one of our friends in San Clemente has a Sprinter van. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, there's no like route, like I live in Tennessee. Okay. So we just, there's just land everywhere. And yeah. in Southern California, I'm like, there's no room. Like you can barely fit in your driveway. What's this yeah. piece of machinery? Anyway, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Some of them get, but you, you can either get the 144 wheelbase or the 170. And there's a big difference between those two, for sure. Yeah. The, the 144, you can, you can, you know, it, it's okay right. with most like HOAs, but the 170, you try and park that thing. It's like, dude, I, this is huge. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, I'm like, this, this is crazy. Um, okay. Very cool. So uh, are you married? Can I ask that? Do you, are, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Married and married? two kids, two daughters. Oh, wow. Two daughters. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I had my first daughter um, not too long ago now. How old is she? Congrats, Five man. months. Yeah. Awesome. Congrats. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. I, yeah, I, definitely. I, I feel it now. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you, do you work on weekends? Do you get to spend as much time as you want with your family? Like, I mean, how much? Yeah, do you essentially, I mean, I control the schedule, right? So, um, 
Yeah. So every Saturday morning, I have another super wealthy customer that I go to every Saturday. Uh, and then Saturday afternoon, I'm, I'm wide open. Sundays, I never work. Uh, and then stuff throughout the week, like the weather's crazy here right now, like super nice. Yeah. So I was thinking about maybe even pulling my, my, my oldest daughter has gymnastics Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So I was thinking maybe pulling her out of school on Wednesday and going camping at the beach. We'll, you know, we'll see if I can get a spot, but Sweet. Uh, yeah, you know, you try and yeah. do what you can. So you work sure. it, It's a hard balance, especially with the two of them. I want to spend as much time, but you know, the world's so expensive nowadays. It's like you, you right. have to, you know, it's, yeah, you just got to walk that Yeah. Long. Yeah, especially in where you live. I mean, in particular, yeah. it's really yeah. expensive. I mean, it's like blows my mind. It's, it's really expensive where I live. I mean, we live, we actually looked it up. We live in the 16th, I don't know how they rank this, but the 16th <laughs> wealthiest county in the nation. Wow. Um, it's funny. I told another guy I know from South, Southern California that, and he's like, who wants to go to Tennessee? I'm like, I know <laughs> it sounds like a lame state, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so it's, it's interesting. There's a lot of like old money here kind of. Yeah, um, sure. yeah. So it's a great place for a detailing business and Nashville's become kind of like a creative hub. It's kind of interesting. Um, so what made you want to get on YouTube? How'd you start doing that? Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, honestly, watching you kind of w- was a good uh, uh, kind of yeah. help spark me going into it. Um, yeah, I, you know, it started off. I, I always watch YouTube. Like that's pretty much what all I watch now. Yeah, you know, totally. So I was like, why not get on there? And I started off trying to do the disaster detail thing, but yep. you know, kind of like he labeled disaster detail it was just dog hair in, and then it's like well you know yeah um and then i reviewed one pressure washer and i it was like well, okay this is getting more views than all my other stuff so i kind of switched gears went into some product reviews and then just kind of tips and tricks and just got away from that the other side right. of uh, the disaster detail because right yeah, it's not it's, sustainable i mean you're like I can't. it's not man it's not i don't, don't want to do those cars it's a night yeah it's a pain in the butt <laughs> it's a nightmare yeah. it's a total nightmare and you're like i find myself i'm like Okay, the detail is a problem, yes, but the lifestyle, man, how did we get here? You know what I mean? I'm like, I think we need to go to like, let's go to a counselor and figure out why is my car this dirty? Uh, It's, this is crazy. Uh, So (laughs) we need a professional. Uh, So, so what kind of videos do you post on your YouTube channel? Like, what's the majority? Like, if somebody asked me that question, I would say, really, I talk about the detailing business. I do, you know, a little bit of everything, but really we talk about detailing business, how to grow detailing businesses, ceramic coating businesses. What is it that your YouTube channel is about? For me, in my head, it's mostly pressure washer reviews. But honestly, <laughs> it's like, um, I just try and focus on helping people either get into it and, or... Uh, without spending a ton of money sure right I, I, you don't have to go buy a Kranzler pressure washer you can start off with something right. less manipulate the nozzle to get more flow and you're off to the races you don't have to go crazy and, and spend right like i did buying the whole trailer set up and everything else you don't have to do that right do you still have that trailer and that like, no. stuff okay. no i sold it a, a long time ago yeah so now i operate okay. out of, out of, i have a van and a truck that, that okay out. Awesome. Is your yeah. van all decaled up or is it just a basic, nope. just basic van? No, nope, I had. So in the past I had two, two vans, um, again, it's detail green. So I had like Kawasaki green, like that really bright green on their, like right. motocross bikes. the whole vehicles were painted that and then lettering and everything else. And the only calls I ever got from it, like, honestly, I wouldn't get any calls from it. The only thing I got was, uh, somebody calling me like, Hey, you know, one of your guys, I see your guy texting while he's driving. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you. But you know, it's not why Perfect. we're <laughs> not Yeah, yeah. Business. That's so, hilarious. I never really thought about that happening. Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay, so cool. no, yeah, now they're just completely white. And so my all my right. presence is either just word of mouth or the online presence. Right, right. Okay, let me ask you, I'm going to ask you some questions that a lot of detailers ask me, and I'd like to see how you okay. answer it. Um, sure. Okay, so I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the detailer asking. Um Okay, when it comes to pricing and like packages, let's say packages in particular, how do you set out these packages? Because sometimes I feel like, you know, I put carpet extraction as like an add on and it kind of confuses people and I have like 10 different packages and I don't know, how do you put together your packages? Yeah, it's exactly for me. I tried to be as all inclusive as possible on my top tier package. Uh, The only thing that's really add on typically is uh, corrections. 
you know, like, like, hey, we're doing an enhancement here. If you want more than that, that's where we get into the other pricing. Other than that, typically, I mean, a car can be pretty hammered and I won't, I, I may, maybe I should, but I don't charge more for it typically. Um, and I just kind of look at it, it, it all balances out. Sometimes you do a car, you're like, man, do you, you want this thing detailed, you're gonna pay the full price, but it's like, it barely need, you know, it looks great. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of look at it like that. Um, and yeah, I try and do it all inclusive so it doesn't confuse the customer. So when they call, they're comfortable or they, you know, it, it's, um, I look at it, there's another guy in San Diego here. He's, uh, I know him really well, but he he was telling me his pricing. He goes, yeah, I look at it like a plumber. Like, I, I don't know what it's gonna be until I open up the wall and see what, I'm like, I get that reasoning, but at the same time, it's, you're not opening the wall, man. You know what a car can be, how, how bad it can be. You know what to expect, you know? So right. yeah, I just try and keep it as simple for the customer as possible. I don't want to upsell them um, on, on a bunch of stuff if I don't have to. And right. uh, it seems to work out because then I'm, I'm getting the repeat business from it. Um, they usually tip well, but you know, so it, it, all, right. it all works out that way. Yeah. You said a couple of things that I thought are good that people tend to, whenever you haven't experienced something, you tend to, a lot of times you approach it completely backwards. And I find that a lot of people do that in detailing. It's like, Hey, I'm going to create 12 different packages based on what I think the customer is saying. And then the phone call just descends into like this confusing rabbit hole. Correct, and yeah. the problem is like, what it seems like from your experience, what you found is that, Hey, my customers don't want me to explain to them all of the ins and outs of what it's going to take. They are just calling me because they want the car to be cleaned to the highest level of perfection that's possible at a reasonable price. Yep, so absolutely. how do I, how do I create things where I work within those constraints? So that makes a ton of sense. Uh, yeah. I, I, I level with you there. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Let me ask you another question. I get a lot. Um, I feel like people turn me away on pricing. You know, when I, when I'm there on, I'm on the phone and they're like, $350 for a detail. I called a guy that who was $75. I, how do you respond to this in an effective way? I guess. Honestly, luckily because of, I'm at that point where I'm, I'm busy, right? When I first started out and I would get that, get that kind of argument, it was very difficult. I would just kind of explain the, I, I would go in a little bit of depth. I'm like, Hey, first of all, we're insured. We're properly trained, you know, all these, all these marks, if they still don't want to come to me, no worries. But uh, nowadays it's, you know, if someone asks for a discount, it's like, well, I'm going to get another call in five minutes and they're not going to ask for a discount. <laughs> I'm going to fill the space. Yeah. You know, so, okay. yeah, it's just, yeah, there's only so, so much time. So now it's, you know, I'm in a better position for that kind of stuff. Right. So maybe in a nutshell, what you're saying is one way to solve the pricing issue is if you just fill the top of the funnel so much yeah. that people will naturally filter out as they go down anyways, the pricing becomes a non-issue over time. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And when I started, I started on advertising on Craigslist and I started off cheap. And what I found was I'm advertising a super cheap detail and I'm getting, I started back in 2005. So then I'm getting a 1995 Honda Civic that's just destroyed and they expect the world out of the thing. And you're like, yeah, yeah. you know, as opposed to now charging much, much more and I'm getting cars that are awesome to work on, you know? So right, it, it's right. one of those things, again, it's a scarcity mindset in, in the beginning, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you just got to get over that and, and start knowing what you're worth and you know what yeah. your value is and go from there. Totally. It really is kind of a getting over it, which is hard to yeah. do, but um, yeah, you really do trip yourself. People, I think people <laughs> think, if I can just discount my services, it's funny people, beginning detailers often go in with this mindset of the number one barrier is always price. And I have really found that not to be the case. And right. um, that that's actually not at the top of everybody's value pyramid. And uh, what you're saying is really true. Pricing actually serves as a barrier of entry to build the type of customers that yep. you want over time. Yep, so absolutely. it makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, let me ask you a non-detailing question, okay? Sure. When you're in San Diego mm -hmm. and you're just like, it's Sunday, I'm not working. Where do you go to eat? Where do we go to eat, dude? So there's just so much good Mexican food here. And uh, that's yeah. my go-to. That's it, like, I mean, okay. there's a million places that we can go to. Other than right. that, there's a place down in Mission Bay with the family. We'll, we'll head down to Mission Bay, let the kids play around. And there's a place called Dana Landing 
Um, it's like a lot, a lot of fishing charters go out of there and they have a right. little deli in there that's that make insane sandwiches out of there too. So that's right, kind of the good. Right. I mean, I eat a lot of Mexican food. <laughs> <laughs> I love much. this. The, so do I. And I live in yeah. the landlocked Tennessee. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's nothing wrong with Mexican food. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Uh, I know, I know people don't, you know, people don't talk about family very much nowadays. It's not very popular in our culture anymore, but you have a family. I have a I family. Do. So I'm going to be a little bit of a contrarian. Okay. Don't stone me. Um, <laughs> yeah. You got to be careful. But uh, what do you like to do with your family, with your wife? Let's say your kids are, you know, you got a babysitter or whatever. What, what's something you and your wife will do just as like a, Hey, this is about us. We're going to work on, we're going to spend time together be in a relationship. What do you guys like to do? You know, luckily, like we've been together a long time now and luckily we're, we're so on the same, like we're different, but we're we, like, we mesh so well together. Yeah. That I, I don't, maybe this is wrong of me. Maybe she's thinking a different thing. I don't feel like there's a lot we actually have to work on. So like, oh, like, sure. and like, Hey, go and just, you know, connect with each other, man. Yeah. Like we connect on just dealing with our kids, which, you know, your, yours is five months old. You said, yeah. 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 So I have four and seven. So dealing with the kids is it happens a lot right <laughs> right, right. With the kids. so um <laughs> right yeah that but uh other other than that man just like going out and just running errands together like doing totally. that and then obviously the beach but if we're going to the beach it, we're, we're bringing the kids you know yeah it's nice yeah. to just totally. kind of disconnect and just go to and like kind of relive the olden days when we were you know before we had kids but, yeah you know, our little girls are, are everything too. So yeah, especially that age. It's like, you yeah, can't, that's the, that's the prime time. You can't Absolutely. not, You're not gonna get have them with you. Yeah, exactly. So that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. So let me ask you this. What are you, you're super established now in your detailing businesses, you know, making, or let me ask you this. How many cars do you, will you see like in a day? What, what's like an average do you shoot for? So, me personally like if like if i'm out working on a job so usually two per vehicle so if i'm just out and working on a vehicle i'll do two in the summer right. it's a longer day i can push in three um but right. typically we're doing two complete details throughout, right throughout right 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 totally makes sense and that's you're not like you said you're dealing with a certain type of clientele or you're dealing with a certain type of detail process where it's not like you're finishing in an hour or 45 Correct. minute detail Correct. it's like this is a process and so you're yeah. not it's not the Walmart detail. We're just trying to move as much inventory as we can. Correct. Which, yeah. Nothing wrong with that, but right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I usually, I, I usually about three hours on a car. Okay. Got it. So very that's good. That's kind of where it, yeah, where it settles in. Okay. Um, I don't want to take up any too much of your time because now you're trapped on the phone with me, you know. So I'm just like, <laughs> you know, getting it all. Uh, like you can't get away. I'm trying to end uh, this for like 15 minutes, but. <laughs> so you're like, Please God, they can stop. Um, okay, so what's the worst? This is my last question. Well, I have one more that's really easy, but this is be interesting. Okay. What's one of the worst encounters you've had with a customer over all the years? Because you're back in 2005. Um, what's one of the worst encounters or problems that you had with a customer or a detail? It just it went totally sour. I had a customer who was a, uh, he was a referral from a buddy of mine who's a, who's a paintless dent repair guy. This guy was a uh, used car wholesaler. So he would, you know, supply a bunch of cars to the deal, to the used car dealerships. And uh, I went out to do a car first time ever. And he like blew up on me, like freaked out. He had a girl that worked with him. He's screaming at her, like super inappropriate. So I, I yeah, we kind of got into it a little bit. And I was like, hey, man, I'm like, he's yeah, just screaming at me. I was like, hey, I'm, I'm leaving. Like, <laughs> you know? but yeah, it was just I one of those things like, oh, I'll never forget it. Cause it was like, it, he was so out of line. It was just unbelievable. Totally. Yeah, it was, totally. He was uh, an interesting one. I haven't worked with him again since. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's yeah, probably that's... my most memorable one. Just getting yelled out for no reason. It was pretty totally. funny. Yeah. That's great, man. Nothing like being exposed to planet earth a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that. Okay. So my very last question for you is, um, and by the way, when we stop the zoom call, don't jump off. I'll just hit stop and okay. want to ask you a question, but anyway, um, okay. For any like beginner kind of intermediate detailers mm -hmm. who are like, yeah, I'm like a thousand bucks a month, 2000 bucks a month, but like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to get the momentum. What kind of advice could you give to them? Uh, really? It, from my experience, especially coming from a market like San Diego, where there's a lot of competition, right? It's just narrowing down on those little niche markets around it. Like it's, like we said, San Diego is a big territory. Carlsbad's not, but it, it's a 
there's three zip codes there and uh, I just keyworded it down and, and just figure out how to keep that funnel full. You know, that's yeah. really kind of my main thing. That's, that's been my biggest source of, uh, of growth is just being able to do that. And in a, so in a competitive area, when you get really specific, you can kind of build a, a niche in this, mm-hmm. yep. whatever it is. Yep. The long tail, long tail keywords and all that kind of stuff or, you know, they, they, they right. Work. Right. Totally. Okay. Josh, thank you so much. So grateful for your time. Really appreciate it. And what we really should do is this will be out on YouTube in a few weeks, but in a few weeks from then, maybe like a month, two months, let's say 90 days, or let's say, let's say 30 days or 35 days, we should reconnect, but we should do a, now that everybody knows your story, we should go deep on a detailing business topic and we'll keep it really concise, like 15 minutes and just talk about, Hey, how do you do X? Sure. Um, Absolutely. I'd love to do that. Yeah, that might be cool. Also, the link uh, in the description box below to Josh's uh, YouTube channel will be there for everybody to check it out. Okay. Um, Yeah, of course. Thank you. And uh, all right, we'll talk soon. Right on, man. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.